Hey, this is Rob at Man Sewing, and today I'm going to show you how to make this killer leather applique pillow. I was lucky enough to borrow this sample from my friends over at ThermoWeb. Thanks a lot for sending it to me so I could play with it here today at Man Sewing. Now, I want to run you through some of the supplies we're going to use, but I have to refer to my notes. Excuse me one second. Let's see. What do we have here today? Now, this is the Robert Kaufman washed, uh, <laughs> washed denim. This is the light indigo color. It's a six and a half ounce weight. And I have to have at least 18 inches wide because I'm going to need two 18 inches square to make the front and the back of the pillow. I'm going to use a little bit of this beautiful faux leather from Artistry. We're going to make our hexagons out of that. And also, let me see here. Oh yes, we're going to also use our fabric fuse, which is a liquid glue to hold the hexes down before the thread does the job. You ready to get started? I'm going to break this down in two steps for you today, and we're going to start just by creating the pillow front and back itself. There's a couple of tricks I want to share with you, so I'm going to slip this out of the way. And we're going to start with that washed denim. And most folks think that a pillow is made from two squares, but that's not exactly true. We want to start with two squares, and for me I made 18 inch squares. One 18 inch strip, cut again, uh, and once it was folded and I came out with two 18 inch squares, let me show you that. Now the big thing that happens is you get dog earring on the corners. I guess I do need my sample to show you what dog earring means. Now dog earring will happen mostly if you have two big squares cut and it causes the corners to really pop up like that. So the professional pillow makers actually don't use perfect squares. What we do is we make some markings so that we can do some cutting and trimming to round out our corners a little bit. So for myself, I've already pre-marked this so you can kind of follow along, but what I did, let me move this a little, is I have taken and measured down three inches here and over a half of an inch there, and what I've learned was important, instead of just cutting, I'm going to need to mark because I need both corners cut. So I'm going to take out a Sharpie and I'm just going to go ahead and lay a nice corner in there. And I'm going to do the same to the other side. Lay that in there like this. Now what I have learned, because I've been practicing this demonstration, is when I go to cut this, you're going to laugh. When I go to cut this, I'm going to technically take one of my markings right off. So here I've set up and I've cut here, and if you look, my other marking has gone away. So what I actually have learned to do, keep my cutter closed, that's one of the things you should always keep your cutter closed when you're not using it, by the way. What I've learned to do is actually make another mark right in here that allows me to know where that corner is going to be as I come through. Let me show you what that means. So here we go. I'm going to cut here, and now I know where that line was at a little bit better intersection so I can get a very nice and clean cut. So this is kind of rounding the corner and that's going to prevent those dog ears from happening once we stitch the front and the back of the pillow together. Before we can stitch the front and the back of the pillow together though, we need to put all the cool decorations on the front. A lot of us call that applique and there's a bunch of different ways to approach it. <laughs> Today I'm doing it the easy way with glue and then thread. So before I can put those appliques on, we need to create them. Let me show you how I did that. Okay, so to get ready to make our hexagons for the applique portion, we're going to use uh, two inch strips of our artistry faux leather. And um, I'm going to create for myself, first of all, a template. When you're cutting out hexagons uh, for a project like this, where it's going to kind of be a free form layout, the more accurate your shape is, the better. So if you want really accurate shapes, you could use something like this. Size isn't going to be as important. That's all part of your creative process, right? So these are pre-cut hexes, or if you're fortunate enough to have an awesome die cutter, of course you could run your hexes through there as well. But we can also do it with an old piece of mylar plastic and a ruler. So to get this shape, I visited the internet and I requested a hexagon template. And so I first found and printed off this. For myself, it was about a 75% uh, size. And when I did, it wasn't quite that two inches I was after. So I got lucky on my second guess. This one was at 80% um, and it finished off at just exactly two inches for me. Once I had that piece printed out, then I decided to use just some standard Mylar template making plastic. And I went ahead and marked my points because I find that when I'm using the finer tip 
and the smallest markings, I get the most accurate lines. Once those points were marked, then I connected those points with my ruler. And basically, let's see, there we go. Oh, and by the way, you're probably watching this at work right now, so I'm not going to take the time to do the entire template because you probably should watch the rest of the show before your boss catches you. So let's just go ahead and use the template I've already made. So that's the way the template was made when it was finished. Again, two inches. And I'm learning, let's mark this stuff so I know what it is later. Now, back to here uh, on our leather, basically I'm going to lay this out so that two of the edges are running parallel along that two inch strip. And then what I do, because I try to be extra cautious, is I will now use my ruler on top of the template so that I may make my first cut. Now, when I made these, I think I used about four two-inch strips stacked up. Much more than that, I found that the leather was starting to shift and slide around, and that's going to make it even less accurate. Now, I've got these cool sticky grips on the back of this ruler, so when I'm doing this, I'm going to be lifting my ruler up and dropping it back down. Like, yay. And so on and so forth. That's a really good left-handed cut, too, by the way. Definitely not safe. But when we're all said and done, we've got a hexagon like that looking sharp. Okay? I actually used about 35 hexagon template pieces or hexagon leather shapes. So I made a bunch of them. And before I got ready to glue these onto that wonderful um, washed denim, I wanted to lay it out and play with it because I wasn't quite sure how this was going to come together. So let's go back to those pillow fronts and get ready to lay out. And I'm going to show you another couple of quick tricks on that. Get this stuff out of my way. And here is one of the ones that the dog, the corners have been prepped for the dog ears. That's the one I want you to use right here. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to take this over to our pressing board or our ironing board, and I'm folding it in half. <laughs> Remember, your corners not, may, may not match up perfect, but your edges will. And I'm going to go ahead and press this. The reason I'm doing this is I'm creating myself a center point and a straight line that I can visually follow without using any real markings. Remember, that leather's not real washable. <laughs> AKA not washable at all. So we don't want to have to try to rinse markings off. Okay. So now that we're all set with that, I'm sure you can see that line there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to follow that line. So the first template is almost the most important or the first hex is almost the most important. And I basically dropped it right about in the center. Then I began playing, and at first I started really tight like this, not realizing that the next hex is not going to fit in there. Can you see how that's not going to fit in there? So what I learned to do is that actually is going to slide out, and I'm using roughly a quarter inch gap between. So then the next row is going to start to fit in here like this. So for my comfort's sake, I wanted to make sure I had enough pieces before I started gluing. So I literally slowly Took my time laying all of these out just like this and playing with it until the whole pillow front was designed just the way I liked it. And what you'll be able to see here in a moment, I've got a couple of different designs. This one particularly here is a little bit less. This is kind of where we're going with this one. And we're going to use this to stitch on in just a second. This one is actually already cured for about six hours. The fabric fused glue needs to dry for a while before we can stitch through it. So that's the other reason I don't want to be moving these around once the glue's on the back. So once I've got my layout just the way I like it, then I'm going to start gluing and I actually started with the center. <laughs> Some of that paper is going to come in pretty handy again because I don't want that glue anywhere. So the glue goes on the back side. And I'm going to run a bead of glue, again, about a quarter inch in. And this glue is nice and lean, so it goes out pretty quick. You can see I've been drinking coffee all morning by the look of those lines. And then what I like to do is use my tweezer. And please notice, all the other pieces are basically still in place. I'm going to drop that down, just like that. And then I'm going to go around the rest of all these hexes one at a time 
gluing them and placing them back, gluing them and placing them back. The more accurately you do this, the easier the stitch process is going to be. You ready to see that? Okay, so as these are starting to cure, like I said, I've pre-prepped one of these for us, and I'm going to show you how to do the stitching on this. And the other thing I thought would be pretty cool is I found that gold kind of Levi's denim looking colored thread, and that's what we're going to use so that we kind of have a real wild, wild west looking pillow for you. i got to take a moment and get my garbage out of the way, because I'm a little bit less tidy than most men I know that sew, right? So we're going to have to move all of this stuff, and we are ready to fire up this machine. Now I've already threaded it and wound a bobbin for us, so we're good to go that way. Do, 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 do. Now, for the first thing we're going to try to do, I have my original crease in the pillow. So I'm going to be able to follow that myself while I begin stitching. And there's going to be a little groove on my presser foot, which is telling me right where my needle is at. Now. I am a sewing machine snob. So I'm going to point out that I have a Sharps style needle in this machine and the Sharps style has a really nice tip on that needle and that's going to penetrate that leather and leave the smallest hole. We don't want a big stitch hole for this. Okay, and so I'm just going to go ahead and lay on the gas. If you have needle down function, use your needle down for this kind of stuff. And I just start watching from one point of the hex to the next. And I'm literally following that crease I created with the iron a bit ago. And there you got it. So this is my first line of sewing. Let's pretend like there's somebody out there that's just not comfortable with that much freestyle sewing work. So it's not impossible that you certainly could take a ruler. So your next stitch line is going to be the, a parallel line and through the next series of points. There. Oh, I'm a bit of a disaster today. I keep losing stuff. There we go. Now, I'm going to use one of these microfine chalk pencils and I am not going to mark on the leather. I'm only going to mark on the denim. And it's going to be a bit tough to see, but it will help me keep on track. And because I think of myself as Mr. Efficiency as well as a sewing machine snob, I'm going to probably mark a few of these at a time. That way I can just sit at the machine and stitch and stitch and stitch. Now, unlike with a quilt, I didn't ever find in my sample making that I had to work from the center on both sides out. Once I had my center line, I worked one side of the pillow and then the next. But you could see how, if you weren't real comfortable, having these chalk lines would really help you nice. Once we run all of these horizontal lines through here, we are not going to go back through the center this way. We are going to find the next series of points on the hexagons and we're going to run the rest of the stitching this way. Now I've already finished another pillow front sample for you. I think it'll be a little easier for you to see with everything coming together nicely. And there it is. Again, you can see that the straight lines now are going this way. And then the next row of stitching went diagonally and then later on diagonally again this way. So, now that we have this all stitched together with all the appliques down, we're going to go back to building the real pillow. And so I'm going to take the pillow back, which also had the corners trimmed out for, so we won't dog ear. And I'm going to lay these basically right sides together. Now the big key when you're doing any kind of a pillow or something like this is we're going to need to be able to get the pillow form in and then top stitch or, or hand stitch to finish this off. So one of my tricks is, is I start on a corner and I literally knot or you know back stitch to lock it in and then I'm going to go all the way around the pillow this way and back past that marking and I'm going to lock in that stitch as well because there's going to be a lot of pressure on those stitches while I'm pushing the pillow inside. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. Okay. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So here we go. And I'm back stitching to lock that in. And a lot of times when you're doing garment or home decor construction like this, you're taking a larger than quarter inch seam allowance, something like three eighths, five eighths. For me, I didn't check, so we're just going to end up with what we end up with, but it is going to remain consistent. I often use the guidelines on my presser foot itself so that I can just kind of see. So I'm actually looking at the edge of the foot or the interior edge of the foot while I'm stitching around here. 
oh, this would be a great time for you to grab a cup of coffee and come back. I'll be here for a minute. And we're approaching the home stretch here. Rotate, needle down, it missed. I love it. I can make anything work. Okay, now this is the part where the opening is gonna be. So again, I'm gonna sew in nice and slow, and I'm gonna back stitch. Now the trick to this is, the smaller the opening, the less hand stitching we have to do, and some of us consider hand stitching a four letter word. But the smaller the opening, the harder it is to shove that pillow in. So we're gonna have to go ahead and do it this way and practice your hand stitching. So hopefully we can see that I've started and stopped here. I've got a tie down all the way around and all the way back again with a lot of tying in so that when I get my hands and stuff in here, I'm not pulling those seams apart, okay? Next step is I just kind of reach to the inside corner and begin pulling it right sides out. Poking in at my corners. Put my finger there a little bit. Now there's another step that we like to do and I will technically fold that under and at least hand press it if I don't go over to the ironing board and press it again. And I'll do the same for the top. And the reason that is, is I want to see a nice crisp line while I'm hand stitching that part closed. From this moment on, all we need to do is put the pillow form inside. It's going to fill it up nice and pretty. We're going to hand sew that bad boy closed or we could install a zipper. Some people will use buttons or Velcro, however you like to finish off your pillows and you have a finished project. Okay, so as we're wrapping up this pillow project for you today, I want to point out just a couple of pitfalls that I fell into while making sample after sample. First, I just want to encourage you all to use the best possible hexagon template or a die if you have the, that advantage, because the better the shape of your applique is, the easier your stitch lines are going to be to follow from point to point. And I also want to point out that the leather is non-washable. So when working with this liquid glue, I actually got a little bit on my fingers and transferred that to the top side of some of the leather. So I keep a baby wipe handy or a little cup of water or something just to keep my hands clean. And the tweezers really helped with that as well. I want to share with you though something super cool that comes out of the creative process when we're all working on this stuff together. This is a killer pillow my friend Natalie made. Now what she did is she used the Essex linen in 10 inch squares from uh, Robert Kaufman to create the pillow top itself. And then she used a little wool charm pack for these little 5 inch squares here and her periwinkle template. And so she made those appliques like that. Now these would technically unravel, so she basically zigzag stitched all around, and I love kind of that rustic texture that the stitching gives to this pillow as well. So Natalie, thanks for creating a cool sample for us to have on Man Sewing here. And with that said, we hope to see all of you back at Man Sewing real soon. Mm -hmm.